Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Darren Newell and I am here to present to you a project that I made for Engineering 869, the robotics graduate level course at San Francisco State University. So this was under the instruction of Dr. Azadi and our goal with the project was to build a SCARA robot. So a bit more about that. So first, a little bit about myself, a little bit about the class. Uh, I am a graduate level student at San Francisco State University in the Scholars Program. This is a program that allowed for me to go from completing my bachelor's at San Francisco State in electrical engineering back in the fall of 2021, or last year, and immediately move into the master's program for electrical and computer engineering, which I was able to complete coursework for in order to graduate uh, this coming spring. And I'm very excited about that. I currently also work, in addition to going to school, uh, at Ricks Industries, which is a gas generation, compression, and cooling company in Benicia, California, where I work as a controls engineer in their advanced development department. The Engineering 869 course is an introduction to the idea of robotics and the classical dynamics that are involved with robots. So we learn about the degrees of freedom that a robot has, its workspace, how can it move around. We learn a little bit of how robots are modeled in terms of the movements that they make, how to represent them as matrices, and also understanding how to perform inverse kinematics meaning that we understand where we want to go. We know the base coordinate system of the robot. So how do we make it move to get to the desired location, given it certain limitations or rotations that it can make? And finally, how to represent these robots in a simplified form using something called Benevit Hartenberg's representation. And then finally, model these robots in a way that makes them uh, makes it useful for us um, in working with actual industry tools, uh, namely MATLAB and Simulink. And so a SCARA robot stands for a Selective Compliance Articulation or Assembly Robotic Arm. And these robots are used in industry uh, primarily for pick and place assignments uh, from an electrical standpoint. A very relatable thing is having your circuit boards have all the components placed and soldered into place. That is something that a SCAR robot is very skillful at. Uh, we also, we industry, I should say, uh, favors SCAR robots because of their compactness, um, their precision, and their speed, as well as their rigidity or robustness. And these are robots that have what we call four degrees of freedom. And so to sort of illustrate the degrees of freedom for you, I will give a crude drawing of the robot can be seen here. So we have the base that extends upwards. In this case, it's sort of internal, but I'll just draw it as an external top that then moves out to a second revolute joint, meaning it can rotate, which is then finally leading out to a prismatic joint, which has a little cylinder that can move up and down. And then there's an end effector attached to that, uh, which in this case is like a little set of claws. And so when we talk about degrees of freedom, it's about how, what kinds of motions or rotations can this little robot make? So the first thing to note is here off the base, this can rotate about the Z axis, which we can call theta one. This arm has a, excuse me, a similar rotation that we can call theta two. Finally, the end effector is actually also something that can rotate about the z-axis, which is a third. And then finally, the whole arm can move up and down in the z-direction. And so that gives us four degrees. One, two, three, four degrees of freedom. And so this project goal was to produce a SCAR robot model in Simulink and be able to simulate its motion 
uh, given a set of waypoints. And so we can see in the bottom corner a little of what motion we wanted to move in. It was mostly just a square with the end effector moving up and down so that you get a little bit of a uh, little bit of a scar action. And so that would uh, be a project that can demonstrate our fundamentals in understanding MATLAB and Simulink, as well as how to move a robot. And so a little bit of background about MATLAB and Simulink. These are incredibly powerful industry tools that are used to be able to build and model and simulate a huge variety of things. You can almost think, if you can think of it, you can model it in MathWorks most likely. Everything from machine learning to digital signal processing to control systems, being able to build entire cars. I know I've heard BMW uses it for some of their uh, physics dynamics and understanding the traction controls of their car. And fundamentally, the idea is that wow. being able to model a system uh, saves us a huge amount of time in prototyping because you don't have to build the physical thing to see how it works. Wow. You can try your ideas out in a simulated environment. It speeds up and also uh, saves a huge amount of cost. And so within MATLAB and Simulink, we used the Simscape and Robotic System Toolbox to build this SCAR robot. We can see within here uh, some of the tools within each uh, library that we're able to make use of. So within Simscape, we use both the multi-body body elements as well as the joints to be able to build up our system um, and also some frames and transformations to relate each arm or link to the other and to their respective joints. Within the robotic system toolbox, we were able to pull some algorithms from the forward and inverse kinematics libraries to be able to set the given coordinates that we were desiring and get a pose or configuration of the robot and also utilize uh, their, tra their trajectory uh, tools in, under the utilities library. And so using those tools, this was the robot that I was able to create. Uh, we can see here, this is the uh, projected model or sort of a, a physical view of the design. And below is the Simulink view, which shows you the block diagram version of the exact same thing. And so within each of these blocks, we can actually adjust different parameters that affect the look of the robot and how it behaves can always replace a joint if we wanted to and also add to it as we desire. It's very easy to scale up or scale down. And this is the robot in motion. And so you can see here, this is the projected waypoints. And you can see this square shape is being made by the arm before it returns back. And then here is the demonstration of the Z motion in action. So going down, moving up, moving down, uh, which is noted here. And so uh, just a little bit of a further clarifier, here is the actual Simulink block diagram of the exact same system. And so here we have the trapezoidal trajectory. This is a way of modeling motion. Um, this scope gives us a bit of a view of the output. So first we can see, I'll bring this up here, but then to bring it back here, <laughs> uh, the inverse kinematic solver takes the projected inputs these waveforms and is able to transform them into what's called a homogeneous matrix, which enables us to understand the motion or transformation in, firm, in, firm, in terms of the X, Y, and Z directions, as well as the X, Y, and Z rotations that are necessary. And this inverse kinematics solver takes our SCAR robot model and is able to take those inputs of the transformation and get configured outputs for each joint and how it's supposed to move. And that's the power of inverse kinematics. Those are fed to the robot, which we have here. And this time we have actual inputs for each joint, which then provides us with the motion of the robot that we saw in the video. And we can then take those back into a forward transform or forward kinematics uh, conversion, which then su supposedly gives us the true motion of the robot. So in the top graph, this is the directed motion provided by the trapezoidal trajectory. And this is the output 
or actual motion of the robot, which we can see maps it almost perfectly. And then finally, this is the uh, example of what trapezoidal motion actually is. This is why it's called that, the steady acceleration, the stable state, and then the steady deceleration. Um, so this is a, uh, a way of moving stably, uh, for lack of a better term, so that it's not flying out of control, trying to get from one place to another. And so without further ado, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about the ins and outs of robotics. And I look forward to uh, building many more models uh, using some of the skills that I gained in this class. I wanted to especially thank our instructor, Dr. Azadi, for his guidance and providing the knowledge to understand our robotic systems and how to build them. Uh, a special thanks as well to the Learning Orbis video series on robotics. That was instrumental to being able to build this robot. And finally, to MathWorks, who of course provided the software of MATLAB and Simulink and the incredible tools, toolboxes that we used to be able to build this and gain a tremendous amount of knowledge in a very short amount of time. So with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks again for watching.